Greece. We are delighted to have you join us this morning for worship service as we live stream from our sanctuary. Pastor Dan will be sharing with us a message entitled, Watch What You Pray For. Beginning April 8th, Pastor Dan is planning to start a thematic Bible study of the Gospel of John beginning Thursday evening, April 8th at 7.30 on Google Meet. If you are interested in participating, please contact Dan by email prior to April 1st. Please remember to include in the email the address you want to him to use so he can send you the study materials each week. Exciting news, we plan to start live streaming our worship services on YouTube beginning next Sunday, March the 28th. The service can be found by searching Elkin Presbyterian Church on YouTube or by using the link that will be posted on Facebook and the church's website. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship God. Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me, a hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall, shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put in you the right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. second lesson this morning comes from the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John. The reading begins at the 20th verse. Listen for God's word. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. 
They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servants be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to it. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I started my ministry in New Orleans. Some of you know that. I was an associate pastor at the Lakeview Presbyterian Church, and as an associate pastor uh, in those days, uh, I didn't preach very much. So I was available for other churches in the area who would only have a solo pastor uh, invite, to, be, to be invited to preach there. And one of them, my buddy named Sam Magby, believe it or not, uh, was pastor of Church of the Covenant, and he called me one day and said, Dan, I've got to be out of the pulpit for two months. I'm having back surgery and I'm not going to be able to, to preach. Can you preach at Church of the Covenant for two months? Well, I checked with my boss, uh, the senior pastor, and he said, be glad to have you gone. And I said, what? Now, Church of the Covenant was on St. Charles Avenue, and if you know anything about New Orleans, what you know is that St. Charles Avenue is one of those uh, cable, uh, not a cable car, it's a streetcar stop. And it was on the corner of St. Charles Avenue and Napoleon Avenue, and that was a big intersection. And so every nine minutes of the service, you'd hear ding, 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 ding. It was a real tricky place to preach. The pulpit was so large that they had an entire Queen Anne sofa behind it. You couldn't see it from the congregation. But there on the pulpit as I ascended that day was the sign. I have seen it before, since. I have, this is the first time. It said simply, Sir, we would see Jesus. <laughs> well, my hair was a little longer. The beard was a little straggly. And I told them I didn't know that they would count on me being that close to looking like Jesus. They didn't laugh, of course. They're Presbyterians. Ding, 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 ding. Went the first trolley down St. Charles Avenue, and we got started. And like I said, it was very tricky to figure out when the next one was coming so that you wouldn't get caught mid-sentence. Since that time, I have seen that sign on more pulpits than I can imagine. It comes from this passage in John's Gospel. It comes from the Greeks who were there. Greek speakers, God-fearers, we call them. They were Gentiles, but they had a sense that the God of Israel might be something they want to take a look at more seriously. And so they come to Jerusalem for festival time and they say to Philip who was from Bethsaida and what that means is he probably spoke some 
decent Greek. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. The title of the sermon is not watch what you pray for, it's watch what you ask for. When you say, sir, we would see Jesus, do you really know what you're getting into? Now, there's no indication that, that the words of Jesus that seem to just pour out of him at this request, that the Greek speakers heard it, the Greeks heard it or not, but his disciples certainly heard it. And what they're picking up now is a very troubled Jesus because the date seems to get closer and closer as it does for us to that time when his sacrifice will be demanded. And he says something fascinating that if a grain of wheat falls to the ground, unless it dies, it doesn't Baptist preacher, Clarence Jordan, who started uh, Koinonia Farm in the deep, dark days of, of Jim Crow in the South. This farm was in America, it's Georgia, and it was an open farm, uh, interracial in, in all kinds of ways, and it was a wonderful experiment. Clarence Jordan says that he doesn't believe Jesus was a carpenter, because all of the images Jesus uses were from the farm. A sower went out to sow seed. The seed fell among thorns and this and that and the other. He says Jesus was, in his own Georgia way, a farmer. And Jesus gives evidence of that here. He points to his sacrifice as a necessary part of God's plan. That unless I die, and are raised again, you will not be able to bear fruit yourselves. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Well, anyone who wants to be a part of my crew simply has to follow me. <coughs> Jesus says, you have to follow me and following this juncture in Jesus' life was very demanding. <clears throat> because day by day now, he was in conflict with not just Pharisees, but now Sadducees and the chief elders of the temple. Around and around they went time and again. <clears throat> and each time, the ruling elders of Judaism came away rubbing their hands saying, serve me, you've got to serve my father. If a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, dies, it'll bear much fruit. If it doesn't die, no fruit. Did the Greeks understand all that? Those Greek speakers that were looking simply for some insight into Yahweh, the God of Israel, did they understand what Jesus was saying? Could they have possibly? Did Philip and Andrew understand? Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Watch what you ask for. When you ask to see Jesus, Jesus has grown up. He is no longer the babe in the manger. He is now a demanding prophet. One who cuts through the superficiality of of first century Judaism with its sacrifices and its laws and cuts to the heart of the presence of God for them. One who will not let God remain mysterious and up there in some cloud of glory, but right here, the kingdom of God is right here. So if you say, sir, we wish to see Jesus, you better take all of it because you can't do it piecemeal. You can't take sweet, loving baby Jesus in the manger and leave it at that. You've got to follow the living Christ who walks the roads of Galilee, who encounters 
the structures, the superstructures, and the religious structures of his day, who stands up for the marginalized, stands up for the Samaritan, the woman, the children, all those the Jews would shun. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Well, if you wish to see Jesus, you better open your eyes to the good things around you, including the good people around you. So we wish to see Jesus. You better be careful what you ask for. Because you don't get a piece of it. You get all of it. One of the guiding lights of my faith, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, writes in his book, Cost of Discipleship. When Christ calls some, he bids them come and die. When Christ calls someone, he bids them come and die. Well, you see, when a grain falls to the ground and dies, much fruit happens. And so if we die to our old self, our old priorities, our old agendas, our own values, and now pick up those of Jesus Christ, we will follow him in that service. Thanks, loving God, for the dedication of your son, for his willingness to sacrifice for our sakes. Help us, O oh God, to be faithful as we follow him, willing to sacrifice where we are called to. We pray in Christ's name.
Apostles' Creed is one of two ecumenical creeds of the church. The Apostles' and the Nicene Creed are accepted by all Christians around the world using this creed, then let us say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, we're two-thirds of the way through this Lenten discipline, this Lenten time, and I would encourage you as we proceed that we more clearly understand what it means to see and follow Jesus. <coughs> this song is called More Precious Than Silver, written by Lynn Tushazo.
us pray. Eternal God, we come to you with confusion in our minds at times. We see tragic circumstances like killings in Atlanta. We see tragic circumstances like ancient volcanoes erupting. Closer to home we see the tragedy of homeless folks and hungry people in our own communities, in our, on our own streets. And as we look upon the world, we see it multiply again and again. Use your church, O oh God, send us out to provide sustenance, community, hospitality. We pray, O oh God, for all of your children who are ill this day, especially those who continue to suffer from this coronavirus. Be with them and their doctors and nurses and families and all those who have seen to their needs. Strengthen them and give them new hope, new perspective, new faith. We pray for our brothers and sisters who grieve the loss of one they love, the loss of a relationship, the loss of a job or a home, whatever has caused their grief. They need your spirit to come and fill them with new hope, a new perspective, a sense that they are never alone. And send your church to touch their lives with that kind of community that makes a difference. Gracious God, be with your church. Spread around your world, help us to do good as we serve the one world. Loving God, be with this church as they seriously look at mission and what it means to serve here. Be with each one of us as we strive each day to be your child wherever we are. To breathe in the fragrance of your beautiful spring world. To sensitively look at sisters and brothers around us who need us. Help us, O oh God, to be your children. For all of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit will rest and abide with us this day and forever.